We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well, Jared. How are you doing? You know, I'm not going to complain. Um, currently in the chat window, there's a dog peeing on a uh, a Michigan fire hydrant. At, so at, that's a... It is that what? week, Jared. It is that it week. It is that week. We don't even mention that name. I yeah, I, I'm going to. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to I'll attempt. I'm not going. You know, I'm at a certain by the the Buckeye fan base, and I will yeah. not address them by their name this week. That that's fine. I let's well, let's be honest here. I carry most of the uh, weight, or I guess the time, the possession here in the podcast. My brain does not work fast you know, enough to do word replacement. You know, so, sometimes it's not about the quantity; it's the quality. Sometimes, Jared. I wasn't bragging that that wasn't me suggesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That wasn't my 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 increased time of possession on the podcast as far as, you know, talking minutes goes. That wasn't a brag. It was more of a and that's it, like if you really go back and analyze the sentence, it was it was actually mm -hmm. me saying like it's a burden. <laughs> if you're because like I I can't I, I really can't do like 40 minutes to an hour and then it, that and then. If two thirds of that's me, I'm I'm just gonna say Michigan. I I can't I can't do it. Like I my my brain does not work fast enough to do that sort of word replacement. It just well you know my brain does not have a control F and we do not have a script here. I I can do it, I can do it. So I'm going to satisfy the fans here, and I will not address them by their name. But we're not talking about that team up north, Jerry. We're talking about the Ohio State Maryland game this last weekend, where Ohio State won 43 to 30. Definitely not the kind of game that we predicted, Jared, the kind of game that a lot of Buckeye fans thought was going to happen. But but here we are, Ohio State with a 13 point victory. And it and it was closer than that. Let's let's own that right uh, it, off the it top. It was. It was. It was pretty much a three point victory. It was a three point victory. We're, we're not going to kid ourselves here, but yeah, we're going to break. We're going to break this down. And I. I believe I might have mentioned it in our know your enemy that in order for Maryland to have a chance in this game is that uh, baby Tua would have to have the game of his life. And he about did. <laughs> he really about did. Yeah. That, uh, we, we saw he, he, was, he was pretty, he was pretty much perfect at the entire first quarter. He could not yeah. miss. He was like 12 for, he made, he completed his first 12 passes or something ridiculous like that. And so I ended up with a, Pretty good completion rating. Um, Dang 26 good. for 36 for almost 300 yards, two touchdowns. He had himself a, a fantastic game, and you, you got to hat, hats off to him there. Um, statistically speaking, the better quarterback in the game. I Let's say that. And that's not me. That's not me knocking Stroud. I think there was a lot of other factors taking place. Um, wide receivers just straight up dropping completely makeable passes for one um and i don't know it's i'm i'm really having i'm really having issues i'm having concerns with a lot right now like a lot um one we got we got the tulia that was like early season form to Leah. He's been back for a few games now, but looked like garbage in all of those games. Yeah. The previous two games we mentioned in our um, Thursday episode, he, he only had like less than 150 passing yards combined in this past two games before the Ohio state game. And he, and he surpassed that, I believe like in the first quarter. So, so Maryland's like Prince that was promised for the game. Yeah. Um, again, like this is what he's capable of. He's he's wildly inconsistent. That's why he's not really going to sniff the NFL, not due to a lack of talent because he's talented. Um, but, you know, he's just very inconsistent. And there's a lot of this going around this weekend. We'll talk more about this in detail on the Tuesday episode on Collegiate Chaos. But like. We saw a bunch. Of, I mean, look at Spencer Rattler. Spencer Rattler looked like garbage the entire season. And then looked like the best quarterback in the country for one night. And Tulia Tonga Vailola 
Ah, I almost, I tried. I went for it. I tried. Almost. 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 Um, he is capable of doing this when he is on, when everything is clicking, he's capable of doing this. He's incredibly talented. Um, but we hadn't seen this since he got hurt. And I don't know if the game plan was just right. I don't know if he just got enough confidence early that he wasn't in his head. I don't know if he just needed a couple games to get back into things. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, but you have to remember this guy was a, I don't know if he was a five star or a high four star commit to Alabama at one point. Um, but he's just never gotten over his consistency issues, but much like Bo Nix, much like a lot of quarterbacks out there who they, some of them are capable of greatness on like any given Saturday. Yep. Spencer Rattler will throw his name out there too. Are like capable of greatness any given Saturday, but just aren't very consistent. And Again, like this is what a quarterback like this can do to you when everything is clicking and it was clicking for him. Um, one of the things you really have to be mindful of, especially depending upon who Ohio State ends up playing in the playoff, which at this point I'm still planning is going to happen. By the way, I'm of the firm belief that whoever loses, if it's a close game, if it's a close game, keep in mind, we, we can't have a situation where one team blows out the other team. But if it's like a if, you, if it's like an under seven point game, whoever loses Ohio State and Michigan, I think still makes the playoffs. And again, if you, if you want to, we are beating Michigan, Jared. I know I'm just not cursing it. That's all. I'm not I'm just not cursing it. Um, what I, all I'm saying is, is that. Michigan, let's let's say let's just say Ohio State wins on Saturday. Michigan can still make the playoffs. And again, like if you're like, oh, Jared, that's wrong. And I need you to explain yourself. Uh, we'll go into more detail on that on the Tuesday episode. We'll, we'll run through some playoff scenarios on the Tuesday episode. Uh, right, we're going to stick to this right now. But all of this to say that Ohio State's not really played any good quarterbacks this year. The Big Ten, outside of C.J. Stroud and Tua on occasion, is a bad quarterback league this year. Who is the best quarterback, Kyle, that Ohio State has played this year? Um, <laughs> you, do you want me to say it? Because it hurts me to say it. I, I think I know the answer. Sean Clifford. No, I disagree. Based, based on his, based on his performance, almost 400 yards passing three touchdowns against Ohio state in that game. I, I would, I would think so. Yeah. But again, like wild inconsistent quarterback though. Right. Okay. But th that was the best quarterback. The Ohio state pl has played uh, up until Maryland. It was. I, I, I don't remember the young I don't remember the young man's name and he got hurt, so you can't really even go look up his stats, but like the Arkansas State quarterback was wild. It was like watching uh Braxton Miller all over again, if you remember. Oh, Blackman? Yeah. No. Am I Are you thinking of are you thinking of Toledo? Toledo. Are you, th are you thinking of Finn? Toledo. Not yeah. The other cupcake game. Yeah, Finn. Yeah. Um, yeah, the Toledo that, and again, like it's a different type of quarterback, right? But it is, yeah. All of this to say that Ohio State's not played many good quarterbacks. The, the, the big 10 is totally deprived of yeah. good quarterbacks this year outside of CJ Stroud. And it's if like for anyone Stroud, is like on his own, he's on his own pedestal. Yeah. Then it's empty. Yeah. Then it's empty tier, again. Tier list the Big Ten quarterbacks. CJ Stroud is S tier. And then no one's in A tier. And before CJ anyone's. CJ Stroud has the gold, silver, and bronze medal. Yeah. No one else is placed. 
Right. And like, I know someone's out there, especially like it probably some, some, some Michigan people may be tuning in this week. Um, Kyle McCord is an A tier. Oracle, I don't know if you're wrong. <laughs> um, before people are like JJ McCarthy. When he's healthy, which he, I don't think he's been all year. He's, he had a shoulder injury early. The dude can't throw the ball accurately further than 10 yards down the field. The ball floats. The ball gets there too late. I, I'm i I'm not. Again, m- maybe if his shoulder was completely healthy, but the but the J.J. McCarthy I have seen this year, the J.J. McCarthy who's played in the year 2022 cannot throw the ball accurately more than 10 yards down the field. Like I said, the ball gets there late. The ball floats. He, he cannot throw the ball with any like actual zip or tight window accuracy past 10 yards. But yeah, he doesn't think- get exco- exposed because they run the ball every play. Um, I don't know what the numbers look like now, but going into the week, Michigan had like... I want to say it was like a 65 35 split in favor of running the ball, which is crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's, let's look at some number. Let's look up some numbers here, Jared. So <clears throat> total yards for both teams, pretty much identical 401, 402 yards. So pretty much identical there. Uh, Ohio, Ohio state did rush the ball a little bit better than Maryland. Uh, Maryland uh, rushed they, the ball for 84 yards. Ohio Kyle, State, they, hold on. They yards. doubled them. Yeah. Ohio State ran for twice as many yards as it's not a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Um, Maryland did did pass the ball a lot more. Well, not a lot more. They they threw it seven more times, but they they had 70 more yards than Ohio State. But I, I think when I look at these numbers here. It's penalties. I think there was a lot of times, especially in that first half, it was just frustrating. It was just frustrating watching Ohio State trying to, other than the one good drive that ended up getting a touchdown in the first half, watching Ohio State's offense, it was just, it was just so upsetting to seeing that they kept shooting themselves in the foot with yeah. false starts and penalties yeah. and delay of games. It, it's just like, it's just like you should not have these type of penalties this late in the season right now. All of this should have been cleaned up. This it looked like a, September it football a hostile environment. It was a stadium that was three quarters full, 40 some thousand fans in there. Not loud no. at all. No, no, no excuse for those kind of penalties. They ended up with Ohio state with 11 penalties, 97 yards of, of a penalties in this game. Got it, uh, got it, got it, got it, got it. Clean that up before this uh, upcoming weekend. I'll say this. We, we don't complain about refs on the show, and that's there's not a butt coming. A lot of times I'll say that, and then there's a butt that comes. Um, no, no butts coming. The refs called this game incredibly tight. They called some holdings that you typically see go. They called some pass interferences that you typically see like not get called, but I think they were calling it tight both ways. I think both teams had 10 or 11 penalties in this game. Yep. It was pretty the, much even. Yeah. The, the referees were calling this one super tight. And I would say poorly, but not poorly in like, I don't, it favored, sometimes it favored Ohio state. Sometimes it favored Maryland. Like I'm not, I'm not, there, there's no like, Oh, the referees were, were yeah. terrible. And that's why Ohio state that, 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 no. No, it's the the referees called a poor game and they t- called things way too tight. Yeah, but that's but Ohio State also benefited from that at times. Like it's there's no the the refs were just bad. They they weren't one sided, but they were they were they were they were they were calling things poorly. They were yeah. So probably the biggest news in this game here, other than probably the scoreboard, uh, <laughs> uh, Trevion Henderson. Um, went down early or left early. Uh, try, try to try to try to continue to play, but you saw after he got that touchdown. Um, in the first quarter, you saw that it was just 
he just wasn't himself. You can tell that his injury still lingering ended up uh, leaving for the game. And then in comes a uh, freshman, uh, Dallin Hayden, and he had himself a game here. 27 yeah. carries, 146 yards, three touchdowns in this game, Jared. But, Featured yeah, on the but, thumbnail. I'll just let, I'll, I'll let everyone know. <laughs> He's on the thumbnail for this episode. I mean, that, that's that's probably the biggest storyline uh, coming up to this week is for both teams is their star running backs for this upcoming game. Yeah. Will, um, will either Henderson or Mayan Williams play or will Corum play um, for that team up north coming up here? We, we, we don't know, but seeing Hayden by the, the way, way he runs here, he's got to make Buckeye fans feel a little bit better coming um, for this upcoming game. And not just Corum, Edwards was not yep. in that game either. He sat with an injury. So, so both you, so both you got, of these teams so got, have their top two running backs, let's say questionable, heading into the game. And then Ohio State also has their third and fourth quarter running back out as well. And they're playing their fifth running back here. <laughs> yeah. Either way. Uh, either way fourth. Um, staying, staying, staying on track with Maryland here. Uh, you look at the stats and it's almost identical. You you just go down the line here, other than a, a clear evidence that Ohio State was able to rush the ball uh, better than Maryland here. Um, but yeah, the, the, the biggest question to, to me here that I, when I rewatched the game here, I think it really just comes down to uh, a couple of things. One, no matter what kind of defense you, you throw up, what kind of defense you call here, the better offensive play calling will always, always uh, be better than the best defensive calling. And, and we saw that, we saw that baby Tua just, he just had the game of his life there and yeah. he, he almost pulled out, he almost pulled out the win there and you got, you got to give your hats off to him there, but have definitely some questioning about, I don't know if it's so much the play calling or if it was just player execution. I can't quite pinpoint exactly where it was. Cause there's definitely some times, uh, especially on key third downs or um, um, yeah, especially third downs where you're, you're playing five, eight yards, the corners that are five, eight yards away from right. the wide receivers. And you're like, why are you not getting pressing further up when they only need five or eight yards there and it's an easy pitch and catch and they get a first down there or they make it very, yeah, they make it very manageable too. It, it just, they've it been doing, it was mind boggling at times on the defense. They've been doing that all year and like depending upon what the defensive call is, sometimes that's the right thing to do. Um especially like Tua, Tua has a good arm. I keep calling him Tua. He's not Tua, his brother's Tua. No. Talia has a great arm. He can put the ball down the field. Um mm. all, all all that is like acknowledged. Um I think that especially in regards to the passing game, I think Ohio State was willing to let them get some of the underneath stuff. Now, Kyle, you're absolutely correct that they should not be doing that. They should not be giving a a, a seven yard cushion if it's third and six. Mm -hmm. I acknowledge that, but they but they have. And again, we'll talk about this more on Know Your Enemy on Thursday when we actually go. I can't kind of can't help but talk about Michigan a tad. Um, again, J.J. McCarthy can't throw the ball downfield. The absolute last thing you should be doing against Michigan is giving their wide receivers big yeah. cushions. Well, when we'll, we'll cover much more about that on our Thursday episode. Cause yeah, I, I would love nothing more than to talk about the game here, Jared. I absolutely do, but I just, yeah, you, you keep, keep reeling me in. Cause I'm going to keep <laughs> wanting to do it. Just want to, just want to stay up, up on here. So let's, uh, let's just finish, let's finish up talking about the, the, the game as a whole by grading each coaching position and positions itself here. And we can kind of dig deeper into, into the game here. So grading, grading, grading the coaching as a whole, I think as a whole here, 
you put up you put up uh, forty three points again. I mean, you could argue uh, it was it was thirty six points with a touchdown at that, that counts. Last second thing, but it, it, it overall counts. overall you coaching up, it counts. You put up forty three points. You give up thirty points, and as the game as a overall, I, I'd probably give the coaching staff probably I would say a solid B. Uh, again, uh, grading as a whole here and what we've seen from the first half to the second half adjust adjustments here on both sides of the ball, and special teams play too on, on both negative and po- positive. I, I would say probably a solid B is what I would give the coaching staff as a whole. Thinking about coaching. One thing, we were watching this game during the social screen in the Discord server. Um, So we were, a bunch of us were in the social screen room watching this game. One of the things I noticed, Ryan Day, by the way, like a lot people used to sort of make fun of Trestle for never saying anything of substance in his press conference. Kyle and I stopped even talking about his press conference. Like Ryan Day is a subtle master of giving us nothing in the press conferences. Subtle master at it. He's very, very good at saying nothing and giving away nothing. Then we got Urban Meyer and Urban Meyer would straight up like call out people, right? Like it was total flip. Ryan Day said what I think was maybe the most public criticism I've ever heard him say. I think it was coming back from halftime. Mm-hmm. May have been going to halftime, but I'm pretty sure it was coming back from halftime. He was talking about the running game and he straight up said, I think the offensive line is blocking well, but we aren't hitting the holes. Yeah. No, you're, and you're that, right. that, by it's, the way, is the closest. That is the closest thing I've ever heard to Ryan Day taking a dig at a player. And like, Kyle, you and I'm just so and I say all of this to like give him credit for going. You gave Trey a bit of a an out. By saying it was due to his injury. And I don't think it's true. I don't think they sat him because of his injury publicly. That's what they'll say. I don't think it's true. I think mm-hmm. that they just wanted Hay- Hayden to go out there and run instead. Hayden went out there and he hit the holes. And I'm just saying, and all because I know we're talking about the coaching, just giving giving Ryan Day credit for benching Henderson because that's what happened. He got benched. Well, and and, and going had, with Hayden, yeah, the boot on too. He had the I, boot on as well. I I know. Sometimes you sometimes you protect. Sometimes you protect the guy's ego. No, I think this is the one time where it's not. I think this is one of the first times in which I actually like fully believe because he's just straight up said. The holes are yeah. there. We're right. just would, not hitting would you them. Grade the coaching staff as a whole then, Jared. Um, B plus. Okay. All right. So let's let's move on to the offensive coaching staff. Uh, I would say I would grade them a. Uh, I would I would grade the offensive a, a B plus overall. Uh, first first half a D, and then probably or like a C something like that. But the second half much much better. You you put up thirty three points in the second half there, but much better second half. Um, yeah, I think that's fair. Um, I I got to knock the offensive. No, I'm not. I, you're, we're gonna go lower. Um, (laughs) it's like a B minus and I, and I have to, I have to wait the first half because Kyle's right. The second half, much better than the first half, as far as offensive coaching goes, how in November, are you not getting the play in on time? Yeah. How, how are, how are the, the stupid penalties? How are you letting that happen? That's that's inexcusable. And like we're talking some of these plays were like the first play of the possession. We're not talking about trying to pick a third day, a third down play and getting in there. No, it's like you're coming out of a TV timeout and you and you get a delay a game. How, how are you doing that in November? It The offense looked like a September offense at times. 
like they were just trying to figure some stuff out. It looked very sloppy at times, but as Kyle said, it was much better in the second half. Yep. All right. So the quarterback play, man, this is, it, it hurts me to say this really Jared, but CJ Stroud, these past few games. uh, Yes. I know the, I know he had a great game against, uh, well, I guess I don't want to say great. I mean, it was, he had a, he had a good game. Yeah, he had five touchdowns in that game, which, yeah, really good. But his completion percentage these past three games has not been. Man, let's go back the, through the uh, film and count the drops, though, man. It, there, there, there is that too. But some of the some of the throws he's he's been making, it's it seems forced or it's just not what we're used to seeing with CJ Stroud. 60% against Maryland, 60% against Indiana, 38% completion against Northwestern. Which we don't count Northwestern. Yeah. yeah. For a Northwestern out. It, so it's just not, not up to par of what I'm liking to see CJ Stroud. Uh, so I'm, I'm, go, I'm going to knock him down a little bit here just because of expectations. You're the leading candidate candidate for the Heisman here. And your only touchdown you you threw in this game was to the running back and not to any of the wide receivers here. I'd probably give CJ Stroud like a C in this game. Uh, uh, that, C that, plus. You, you go ahead and do that. I'm, I don't think it's on Stroud. I, I think, I think you're placing the blame in the wrong place. Um, he has dropped back on many occasions and just found no one who was open. Um, I don't like to call out individual players on the show too often, but Julian Fleming has more drops than receptions at this point through the season. I, I don't know if that's a accurate statistic, but it feels like it, especially the past few games. Well, well this game, he, he was much better. I don't think he really had. I, I'm trying to remember if he had like really a drop in this game or a or, couple. I don't remember them, though. He, he, made, he made some great catches in this game, though. Fleming. Um. Yeah. He had a he had a cut. He had a couple of catches in here, I believe. Yeah. Literally two, and he dropped at least that many. Uh, I I think I think your blame here is misplaced, and the offense is not running smoothly. A lot of that has to do with the fact that the running game has not operated smoothly. Um. Emeka doesn't seem to be getting open like he was getting open earlier in the year. Julian Fleming doesn't seem to be able to catch the ball with the amount of consistency that you need to be able to do if you want to play for Ohio State. And other teams have figured it out and they're, you know, doubling Harrison. But yeah, the other the other teams yeah. are going to have to, or the other the other wide receivers, you know, like when we've seen struggling like in the interior of the offensive line this year, you kind of just have to roll with it sometimes because that's not a position that they've recruited with a lot of success in recent years. So you don't have amazing depth at the offensive guard position, but with the wide receivers, at what point do we, I mean, Hey, it would be wonderful. If JSN came back on Saturday. Um, but at what point do we start looking at Ballard or hell Xavier Johnson to, to come in and say, I'm just, I'm tossing it out there because the wide receivers have not been playing well. And I know there is some very hungry, very talented players not getting snaps. And I, I just, I think, I think, Placing it on CJ, I, I don't believe is accurate, Kyle. But that's just my opinion. Um, okay. I'll I'll okay. give him I, I'll I'll give him I, an A minus. Oh wow! Yeah, I I I it's, did not. It's not that. him, especially especially the second time that I watched that. I I I don't agree with that, Jared. There's definitely some miss throws and miss um uh, miss opportunities that CJ has done in the past, and I didn't give him an that, A plus. What we, what, what we expected. I didn't give him an A plus. Give him an A minus. All right. Offensive line. I I'd probably give the offensive line an A. I thought I thought overall the offensive line did really well here. Um, I do not believe 
yeah, no no sacks given up in this game here. Um, I'm just double checking that real quick, but they they gave they gave CJ plenty of time in the pocket to uh, to make those throws to make his decision in there. Uh, in my opinion, he really he he didn't. But and on the running game there, they they opened the holes and we saw what um what Hayden was able to do rushing for about five and a half yards per carry here. Yeah. I'd, I'd give the offensive line in a solid a here. Yeah. Uh, kept CJ clean for most of the game. Um, uh, yeah. Everything Kyle said, um, by the way, shout out to Enoch Famahi who has to come in, uh, after, uh, Matt Jones gets hurt, uh, and thought he played well. He, it was later in the game. He didn't play necessarily a ton, but when he came in, I thought he played very well. No, absolutely. All right. Uh, running backs here. Oh, I'd probably give the running backs a, yeah, I'd probably give an, an A as well too. And yeah. I, I mean, I, I want to knock it lower based off of Henderson's performance, but I think what Hayden did with three touchdowns, five and a half yards, a pop here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I'll give, I'll give I'll give the running back group a, a solid day just because of Hayden's uh, efforts. Yeah, and again, like we don't know, I we don't know the story behind behind Henderson. How bad? Like I don't ankle turf toe. Not sure what the situation is there. Um, because like on the reception, he was great. He was great for that one play. Uh, he's not been able to find the holes running the ball. And I have been saying it since September that he reminds me of J.K. Dobbins. And J.K. Dobbins, his junior year, is especially in the lead up to the season, was telling everyone in the press all day, every day, mm -hmm. I was great as a freshman. As a sophomore, I tried to make every play into a big play instead of just getting the holes that were there. And it hurt me. Yeah. And I think that's exactly, again, plus injuries. Like, let's not, he's, Henderson dealing with injuries all year. Something's wrong. Again, maybe it's an ankle. Maybe it's a turf toe. We don't really know. Um, but something's it, or maybe it's psychological or maybe it's, you know, the, the JK Dobbins thing, but he's not been playing well this year. Um, I'll probably do mine like an a minus Kyle. Um, okay. Because, you know, Dallin played great. Yeah. What's up some card. All right. Moving on to wide receivers here. Mecca led the team with receptions and yardage here, six receptions, 82 yards, Marvin with five for 68 yards and Julian Fleming, the third receiver with two for 30 yards. Not it, it, it's, this is an issue that we've uh, started seeing recently here. And I'm definitely concerned with, with uh, you, you mentioned about Fleming here. Yeah. He, Definitely these past few games, or really most of the year, has dropped a lot of passes here. Um, and I feel that Stroud may be more hesitant to throw it to Fleming and why we're seeing so many more throws going towards Harrison because of the just amazing catching ability that he's had this year. But I'm, I'm really disappointed with what we've what I've been seeing from Fleming here. And over overall. And yeah, I, I'd probably give the I'd probably give the wide receivers like a like a C plus as well. I I I think the wide receivers need to get better at getting open and just just stopping with those um those drop balls. Yeah. Uh Suncard says I felt like the broadcast was the B team and didn't have quality camera angles, just me. The announcers were definitely the uh, to say they're the B team is 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 generous. Generous, yeah, uh, yeah. I I'm not a fan. 
<laughs> not a fan. Um, I thought the camera, I thought the camera work was fine though. Right, what would you give the wide receiver grades, Jared? Um, I I think your C plus is f- fair. I might just do a standard C. Okay. Um, yeah. Again, like this should be the most talent. This should be the deepest, most talented group on the team, and they don't look like it. We grade yeah. based off of expectation, and the expectations should be high here. Yep. All right. Moving on to the tight end here. Cade Stover had two catches for 20 yards, and one of those was the uh, critical catch. I Very think critical. It was on third down. I believe it was on third down there. Uh, yeah. I, I think overall what Stover has been doing and especially on the run blocking game, like I, that was one thing I've really noticed watching it the second time Jared was just the run blocking ability of, yeah. uh, of our tight ends here. Just really, really good job from them. So I'd probably get the, the tight ends like an, an a minus. I, yeah. I, I think it's, uh, I think that's very, fair. very well done job by the tight ends in this game. Yeah, that, that that's fine. Um, Stover is very quickly coming one of my favorite tight ends at Ohio State ever. I'll say it. Mm. As far as like both blocking and passing and pass catching, he's quickly becoming one of my like favorite tight ends at Ohio State. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Nick Vinat right. joins the chat. All right, moving over, moving over to the defensive side. Defensive coaching. I probably, I'd probably give them a B. I'd probably give the defensive coaching like a B, B minus here. You know, I'll go with a B minus here. Uh, really, really proud of how well Ohio State's have done with the, with the run defense side of it. But man, that's. I, again, I mentioned it at the start of the show here, Jared. I don't know if it was just the the scheme, or if it was just the players playing too off of the of the line of scrimmage there. But we'll, we'll cover more of this on the Thursday game. But you you gotta gotta cross up a little bit closer when it's third and five, third and six, and you're eight yards um, from that wide receiver. You got you gotta play him closer. I think it was mostly Talia playing on top, uh, playing uh, on his head. I think that's what it, what, what it was more than anything else. A lot of his best plays were straight up breakdowns. Him escaping, making time, finding a player. Um, it wasn't even any one of the Maryland wide receivers that did it. Um, Demas had five catches. Jarrett had three. Felton had two. Copeland had four. But Hemby, uh, another guy who's I can't read that from here, had four. Um, Jones had three. Balls totally spread around. Um, I don't. I don't know how much of it was was a was it being like a bad scheme. And again, like we've talked about, as as and Kyle just mentioned it. Hey, if it's third and six, maybe don't give the guy an eight yard buffer. Um, but they've been doing it all year for better or worse. Um, I, I didn't think there's anything wrong schematically. I think they just weren't always making plays when they needed to make plays. And I think that and again, I don't know if this was a scheme or an execution issue, they were going after Talia like he was a stationary quarterback at times. Like it didn't look like they were trying to play a contain on him as far as like the pass rush standpoint. Uh, so I think that was probably a bit of a mistake. Um, but yeah, Kyle, I think your B minus is, is accurate. Okay. Uh, Sun card asks, why do bubble screen? Why do bubble screen sucks for Ohio state, but work wonders against Ohio state. I don't think they work wonders against Ohio State. No, I mean, they I only think there was maybe there was one that got more than 10 yards, but mo- most of the most of them. I don't, even, got, I don't think that was more of a traditional screen. I don't even think that was yeah, a bubble. There was a lot of them like Ohio State was right there getting them for five, six yards, if not less. And there was a couple of plays. I remember one in particular. Um, 
was it Tanner? Um, really got in there and just destroyed them and got a negative, um, negative play for Maryland. So yeah, no, I I wouldn't agree that that bubble screens has worked wonder, wonders against Ohio State. I, yeah. I wouldn't agree with that. Why don't we run more screens with Xavier? Xavier's not been on the field since no. Julian Fleming, not not with a lot of consistency anyway, since Julian Fleming came back onto the field. Yeah. All right. Um, moving on to the defensive ends here, Jared. Uh, oh, boy. Defensive ends. Harrison had himself a great, uh, well, especially fourth quarter or last drive. <laughs> Harrison really stepped up there. Uh, Sawyer. Um, really making a name for himself these past few games as well. JT uh, really coming coming in, especially early in the game here, making his presence known. Yeah, I'd I'd probably give the defensive ends probably a solid A. I, I thought I thought overall the defensive ends did really well. For the Zach Harrison part, sealed it, the game too. Like you got to talk about that. Two straight sacks at the yeah, end of the game, yeah, totally yeah, sealing it. Yeah, that's. That's what I was saying. He oh, he, sorry. He had a really good game, especially that last series. <laughs> yeah, mostly. Well, no, that's not fair. He he was creating pass rush a lot. Um, great in the on the run. Um, um, yeah, no, I thought the defensive ends played incredibly well. Again, I don't know if this was a I don't know if this was a schematic issue or if this was an execution issue. They they seem to be going like full out at Tulia and not and, and that sort of gave him an opportunity to you know sort of escape the pocket like there wasn't a lot of contain put on him maybe that's not on the defensive ends maybe that's on the linebackers maybe that's just a coaching decision I, I don't know but um yeah when it I, I thought f from a from a playmaking standpoint the defensive ends were were good I do think there were instances in which the in which the quarterback had a lot of time to throw the ball at times. Um, so I don't know if I'm going to go a straight A. I might do an A minus. It, it felt like they were even, it felt very feast or famine as far as just like the pass rush in general goes. Okay. So what would you grade them, Jerry? A minus. Okay. Defensive tackles. I, I th th this is one that I have a hard time trying to figure out how to grade them. I think the defensive tackles that kind of, kind of to what the point you were ju just making, trying to make, um, trying to make, uh, uh, Talia a little more uncomfortable in the pocket there. And I feel like that a lot of the pressure up in his face wasn't, wasn't there that I was hoping to see. So I, I probably give the defensive tackles like a B B plus here. Uh, definitely did really good on the on the run stop here. Yeah, it's about uh, to say you need to acknowledge that their best running back had 39 yards. Yes, no, I, absolutely. But but the damage that Maryland did was on the passing was on the uh, was on the passing side, and we and we saw many times when Ohio State got pressure right up on on Maryland there on obvious like well not obvious but just on the passing plays. He he was just really in just very inaccurate and was just not himself there. And if the defensive tackles were able to get up on his face a little bit more, I think this would have been a much. Uh, I don't think Maryland would have had as many points. Uh, totally, totally fair. No, I think we 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 saw a like last year we saw Tyleek Williams uh, participating a lot in the pass rush. Earlier in the season, we saw Mike Hall participating a lot in the pass rush. And while I do think these guys are still doing a good job from a running standpoint, um, we've not seen them disruptive in the past game the way we had seen have seen them recently be, been disruptive in the past game. So I, I think you're you're correct, Kyle. Um, I, I'll say this, though, I my bigger concern which is maybe why we've seen more Vincent on the field as of late. My bigger concern with the defensive tackles is anchoring the middle of the line for the run block. 
I think that's probably it might be why again like I feel like that's why we've had Vincent in there more um that's more that's my bigger I'm gonna weigh that a little bit more so I think I'll do mine like at an a minus again like they totally stuffed Maryland's ability to run the ball like Maryland just quit after a while yeah all right moving on to the linebackers here Jared uh man Tommy Pickles just what 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 more can we say here? Uh, he he had himself a really good game here again. Thirteen tackles, ten of those solo. One of and them a tackle, a tackle for a loss. He did have a tackle for a loss there, uh, but I feel that the linebackers as a whole, there there was definitely times when they lost containment of, of um, of baby Tua, and and he made made them pay to extend the plays, which extend the plays and maybe even getting those um, critical first downs too at times. But I mean, part of it, you you just got to give your hats off when you have an athletic quarterback quarterback like that. You're they're, they're going to make plays though. But yeah, I, I think the linebackers, I'll probably give them like a, a minus something like that. I, I thought overall the, the line, the linebackers did a really, really good job. Yeah, I mean, you, you talk again. We talked about Maryland's complete inability to run the ball. Tommy Eichenberg ten solo tackles. Um, it probably should be noted. Steel Chambers got a touchdown in this game. He did. Yeah. Um, I mean that that play was mostly Zach Harrison, but hey, sometimes the guy's got to finish the play, got to step up and finish the play, and Steel Chambers was in position to do it. So yeah, I think like an A minus is probably fair here. Um, All right. Again, like I think one of the reasons why is like you have to you have to take into consideration containment. Kyle, by the way, check out if you've seen this gif yet. This is a new one in the Boom Library because that, that that's your boy right there. That is my boy Teddy, Ted Ginn, Ted Ginn Jr. He is my boy. Yes. All right. Uh, speaking of uh, burning. Um, burning wide receivers here um, or wide receivers, burning cornerbacks here, uh, cornerbacks here, Jared, man, that again, I, I have a hard time trying to figure out how I should grade the corners. I'm not sure if it was a scheme or if it really was just the receivers playing that far off of them. And I think somebody mentioned it in the chat. I know I wasn't participating in the, um, the social screening, but I was, I was watching Chad as I was trying to watch the game on my, on my tablet while I was on the, on the road. But yeah, a lot of those like 50, 50 balls do not seem like they've been 50 fifties, Jared. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, 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 and again, a lot of, a lot of those wide receivers that the deep, that the corners have been going up against, uh, have been a lot taller and they've been outmatched, but just some of those plays, they just seem like they were just so lost on where the ball is at. And we, we saw it, we saw it again in, in this game here. I, I was just not that this game was just not acceptable from an Ohio state corner standpoint here. I probably give the, they, they made some plays. They definitely made some plays uh, here and there, but I, I probably give the corners like a C minus. I probably give them a C minus here. I just, not not the expectation we're wanting to see from these corners here. I, I don't know how much of it's on them, though. Like, I don't think they're making the decision to like you can knock Denzel Burke if you want to knock Denzel Burke. But is he making the choice to play seven yards off the ball? Is that his choice? And a lot of the bigger passes that were given up or I would say actually given up by the safeties. A lot of those were downfield. Uh, McAllister had like a very hot and cold game. He made some great plays, gave up some big plays. Um, there was a pass interference in the end zone that I believe that was a safety that did that. Um, yeah, and yeah, Han Hancock's young. He has not had a lot of playing time. He's had injury issues. Give him some time. Um, Knowles just likes playing it all forward. Well, yeah, Knowles likes to play things forward, which means in order to 
be safe on the outsides. The wide receivers need to be playing, you know, a bit of a, a safety, not a not, safety is the wrong word to use there, but they have to play with a bit of cushion because again, like one missed tackle or whatever, then the guy's gone. Um, it's just, you, there's no perfect defense. Yeah. In order to do some things exceptionally well, that's going to hurt or hinder or, you know, offer openings elsewhere. It's just how it just how it goes. I think the soft zone was because we got burnt by Talia's legs. I think the soft zone was at times because. I think they were just daring them to throw it accurately, consistently, because Talia has not done that since he came back from an injury. They basically said to Talia, yeah. we're not going to let you run the ball. Or you know, not say that to him. They said that to the offense in general. And then and then we're going to give you some cushions. We're not going to give you big plays down the field. We're going to give you some cushions. We're going to play the linebackers up. We're going to play the safeties up. We're not going to let you run the ball. We're going to give your wide receivers some cushions because we're not going to let you beat us deep. And we're going to force you to be consistent and accurate and on time. And by the way, I don't disagree with that game plan going into the game. And he did it. Yeah, he did do it. They challenged him to do it. They said, go be consistent because he hasn't been consistent since he came back from the injury. Today was or that day he was consistent. I don't mm -hmm. disagree with the game plan based off of what we've seen from Talia at, at, you know, at this point in the season. Now he came out and he answered the call and he did exactly what Ohio State gave him an opportunity to do again, because there's no perfect defense. There's no perfect defense. There's always going to be, sometimes you just have to choose your weakness. And I think that's yeah. what the defensive coaching staff did here. They said, we're going to give up quick, easy passes because we don't believe that Talia is going to be able to consistently hit them. And they were wrong. But again, based off of the evidence they had of how Talia has been playing since he came back from the injury, I think that was a good scheme. It's just Talia, like Spencer Rattler, chose this game to play outside of his mind. It happens. I agree with this entire take. Thank right, you, what, Esquire. What would you grade the corners here, Jared? Oh, is that what I was doing? Um, yes. I, I think it's easy to scapegoat the corners when a quarterback throws for a bunch of yards. I don't think that's what happened. Um, I, I don't think it's totally fair to just put it all on the corners. I um, think the safeties deserve a lot of blame. Um, and I think the scheme, again, like I said, I don't disagree with the scheme, but the scheme deserves a lot of the blame, too. I put him at like a B, B minus, B minus. Let's do B minus. All right. All right. Moving on to the safeties real quick here, Jared. There there were times again here. I, I thought overall the I thought the safeties did a pretty good, pretty good job here. I mean, I mean, Ransom, Jared Ransom had himself a, a game here. Ransom but, had a really good game. Uh, he also gave up some passes, like in a game in which everyone gave he up did. some passes. Ransom also gave up. But again, from a special team standpoint, <laughs> he blocks another punt. Um, he made some yeah. excellent plays. But again, he also made some bad plays at times. Um, mm -hmm. I, and I think you could say, uh, I think, again, like I already said, McAllister had some really great plays, had some not so great plays. Like they, they were largely just um, feast or famine. I guess the safeties were, um, I'll, I'll do, I'll do another B minus. All right. All right. Did yeah, we unlock I, a cheat code yeah, with probably, ransom on punt block? Potentially. Potentially. Yeah, I'll say this. I think the Maryland punter took like a, a, an extra half step. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll give the, I'll give the safeties a B minus too. I, I think, I think that's, I think that's fair. Uh, McAllis, uh, Hanner McAllister made some good plays, but also, made some plays where he was just not in the right position. But yeah, I, I think a B minus, I think, it, I think it's fair, Jared. All right. And then last is special teams here. The good, the goods and the bads. I mean, yes, we talked about ransom with his punt block there, but then there's yeah. also a, 
an extra point block that was returned for two points. Yeah. Uh, for that Maryland got. So I'm plus is a minus there. I'd probably say probably say a, a B then for special teams. Yeah, yeah. And X X had X had um a couple of um good returns on a kickoff return. I, I think I think that's your I think that's your kickoff returner right now is is Xavier. I really like what I see there. And I still have my fingers crossed that he'll he'll return one eventually here, but <laughs> uh, he should get more run. I mean, depending upon where we're at with Henderson's ankle, foot, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What would you what would you grade? On oh, I mean, yeah, no, that's special teams. That's exactly what I thought you meant, Esquire. <laughs> oh, as a wide receiver, you mean? Again, Who's I don't disagree with you. Teams, Jared? Your your grade is fair. B's fine. All right, all right, all right. And then we are going to quickly here give our, our Buckeye leaves, Jared. So let's start with the offense. Who's your offensive um player? You give your Buckeye leave to. Is there a question? Dallin Hayden. Yeah, it's Hayden. <laughs> it is Hayden in this game. All right, we'll we'll, we'll make that easy. And then on the defensive Chat. side, well, Sun Card Sun Card took up all of the votes. Dallin from Dallas? No, he is not from Dallas. Yeah. What would you grade the defense, Jared? He's from or Tennessee. Who, who I would believe. you give the defensive? Um, I feel like Memphis. Yeah, there you go. That's Tennessee. I wasn't going to pull up the city that quickly. I'm I'm not one of those guys. Um, let's see. A defense. I feel like I feel like there's a couple good answers here. Um, I'm going to give it to Zach Harrison for delivering when the game was. Kyle, was that yours? That was mine. <laughs> Do you want me to pick a different one? If you want, if you if you had a second person, I have like three. I think. Um, All right. I'll so I'll go I get you got it. You got to go, I think, probably with Tommy Eichenberg again, 10 solo tackles in a game where Maryland achieved nothing on the ground. Tommy Eichenberg, my my and if anyone's curious, my my third was Ransom. All right. And, and that's my wild card is Ransom. Just OK, he, he, made, he made some great plays and obviously the, the punt block as well, too. So, yeah, my wild card is Ransom. Uh, my wild card pick. Um, so I was going to say I was going to answer ransom here. So you, you, you got me back. Congrats. Um, my wild card, I will go with here. I'm going to go with Enoch from When the answer or when the question arose, he stepped in. So, Enoch Vamahi, I thought he played, you know, he came in, played excellently. All right. Of course, an a lineman from Jared. Yeah, that's that's how I roll. That's how I roll. Of course. I agree. Well, that's fair. All right, Jared. We are we are coming up on time here, so um we don't have any questions in our in our mailbag here, but uh it's probably for the best here um, as we are running short on time. Uh you got anything else before we wrap things up? Now, um, like you said, we're short on time, so let's let's get the hell out of here. Um, <laughs> Odin, Odin threw in the last second to ask Sloopcast, uh, hey, can I have $500? No. Sorry. Maybe if we had more Patreon money, I could give out $500, but we don't. But if you want to help contribute to the Sloopcast, you can go over to... Uh, Patreon.thesloopcast.com. That's patreon.thesloopcast.com. You can get access to a bunch of cool stuff for just three dollars a month. Um, you get at you get early distro on podcast, including your own uh podcast feed that's strictly for you that doesn't have those annoying spreaker commercials that play before and during the episodes. So if you don't want to, if nothing else, for three dollars a month, you can get the sloopcast ad free 
no pre-rolls, no mid-rolls, none of that stuff. Uh, Commercial-free experience. You also get premium access to the Discord server. The Discord server is free, discord.thesloopcast.com, but there are some premium channels. Um, shenanigans for $3 a month. Yeah, and there's a fifth episode. If four episodes a week, see you, card. if four episodes a week not good enough, there's a fifth episode. And uh, it's it's total nonsense most of the time. So there you go. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's Corner? I was hoping to have some good news here. I saw that the Ohio State men's soccer game was in the second round of the NCAA tournament in soccer, uh, but did lo- lose to UNC Greensboro in in penalty kicks six to five. I was hoping to have some good news here by um uh, by the time that we got to the end of this episode, but just a little short from the men's soccer team. But for them being they had an outstanding uh, postseason and making it to the second round, beating Wake Forest in the first round. Um, yep, pretty solid season for this Buckeye team. There you go. Is that it? That's it, Jared. All right. Um, let's see. I'm trying to find a band. Trying to find a band. Try to find a band. Um, do we have, you look exhausted, Jared. Um, that's not nice. (laughs) (laughs) Um, yeah, uh, tonight's ending music will be brought to you by, uh, let's go with the new bomb Turks. I like a, I like a good, I like a new, new bomb Turk song. So let's just go ahead and do that. Let's get the hell out of here. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is the New Bomb Turks.